Susie, I've got marks of a hook here. And I found the window. Oh, hello. I reckon he climbed up the drain pipe and lowered himself down to cut the window. What, on a rope? Yeah, I reckon so. Sounds a bit risky. Rather him than me. I'm going in now. Every other window in the flat double locked and alarmed. Well, that's why he chose that one, Mrs. Green. Oh, Andrew, before you go. Sir? Did you get my memo yesterday? Yes, sir. Oh, I have to say I'm surprised that absenteeism is so much of a problem. Yes, well, according to the powers that be, the system is being abused. Now, I want Sunhill to take a hard line on this. Let's face it, we've got enough officers out for genuine reasons without them phoning in sick whenever they fancy an extra hour in bed. <laughs> Point taken, sir, but it hardly applies to my team. <laughs> You're not getting complacent, are you, Andrew? Not at all, sir. Excuse me, sir. It's all right, Bob. I've just finished. I'm off then, sir. Matthew said he'll cover for me. I'll be, what, two, three hours? If I get the chance to talk to Sergeant Paget's widow, I'll offer your condolences, shall I? Uh, yes, Bob. Yeah, please do that. Sir. Please, well. Sir. Sir, you're going to be a sergeant short this afternoon. I hope the rest of your team is in its usual working order. To Mockerton last night, same as usual. And Mr. Green? Oh, he turns out the light. He's asleep before it's dark. So neither of you heard anything? Well, to be honest, Mrs. Green, it was probably for the best. Once he was in, I mean, well, you know. Oh, I know. Would you like to add anything to this list? Will we get any of it back? This was a highly professional job, Mrs. Green. I don't expect we'll find any fingerprints, and the items that were taken will be hard to trace. But there's not that many people who can do something like this, and a lot of them will be known to us, so we should have a distinct advantage. What's the latest on Dave Quinnan? Sir? I asked you to get hold of him. Have you done it? Well, we've phoned his flats uh, several times, but there's been no reply. He might be too ill to come to the phone, sir. Keep trying. When you find out where he's got to, tell me. Yes, sir. Who's been rattling his cage? Well, if you do think of anything, give us a call. Yeah? No luck. Yeah. What about you, Sarge? The woman in the flat next to the green said she heard something on the roof about 11.30. Thought it was a cat. Said it didn't sound heavy enough to be a person. Is this the last one? Yeah, then it's back to the files. Well, there can't be that many to choose from. Hello, oh, I'm DS Greg. This is WDC Croft. You're making inquiries about the burglary upstairs. That's right, sir. How did you know? Bad news travels fast in this place. My name's Tony Grant. Please, come in. Have you got something to tell us, Mr. Grant? Yes, I think so. Actually, I feel a bit of a fool about this. I saw him, you see. Saw who, sir? The chap who robbed the Greens. Well, I didn't know it at the time, obviously. When was this, Mr. Grant? Last night, half eleven-ish. I was coming back from the pub. He was in a car parked across the road, watching these flats, casing them. What makes you think he was doing that? Well, you could tell. And what did you do, sir? <sighs> Not a damn thing. I could kick myself now. It just didn't occur to me. Can you describe the car? It was a light-coloured saloon. I didn't get the make or the number. And uh, what about the man? Black? White? White. You certain? I didn't see his face, but he bent down and I saw the light shine on the top of his head. All right. So he's bald? Yes, he was bald. I think Dart had got Ten years ago, he was going thin on top then. How did you catch him, Gov? We nicked a fence with some stolen property and he cut a deal. Named some names. Dyer's was one of them. We turned the screws. Dyer put his hands up to it. Does this sound like him? Absolutely. Careful, methodical. He's a family man. He's not a tearaway. He treats burglary like a skilled trade. The word was his father taught him the business, but that might be so much bull. Good climber. Like a monkey. He always shows the smallest and most inaccessible window. Any idea what he's doing now? Oh, not a clue. I haven't seen him for ten years or so. He must be knocking on 40. Mind you, he's the sort of bloke who'll keep himself fit. If Dave's there, he's still not answering. He's probably in bed with his head under the pillow trying to stop the room spinning round. It's not like him. You saw him last night. After Nick must have bought him a drink. Yeah. We're talking about Dave Quinn, are we? Yes, sir. So why was everybody buying him a drink? It was his birthday, sir. Oh, I see. And now he hasn't turned up for duty and you can't reach him at home, is that right? Oh, there's probably a very good explanation, sir. Oh, I'm sure there is, yes. Actually, I was looking for Sergeant Boyden. Do you know where he is? Yeah, he's standing in his custody, Sergeant, sir, in Sergeant Cry's absence. 
Yes, of course. Yes. Andrew. Did you know it was Dave Quinnan's birthday yesterday? Yes, I knew, sir. Why? I just thought it might have some bearing on his absence, that's all. Sir? Well, you are aware that he's not here this afternoon, aren't you? Yes, of course, sir. And that he was on a booze last night? Of course, the two things could be totally unconnected. Well, well, well. Light coloured saloon. Hello, I'm Detective Sergeant Greg. This is WDC Croft. Is Jack Dyer in? Dad, it's the filth! Ask him in, love. I'll be down in love. Yeah, you Jack Dyer's daughter? Oh, I can see why I made you a detective. What's your name? Susan. What's yours? Same as it was a minute ago. WDC Croft. The white Ford parked outside, is that your dad's? Yeah, so what? Does he work in? I mean, does he have a day job? No, nor a night job, neither. How about your mum? Yeah, she's at work now. And you? I'm training to be a beautician. Part-time. Where was your father last night, Susan? Mum and Dad went down the pub for an hour or two, same as usual. Rest of the time, they're here watching telly. Oh, Susan! Come in! Jack Dyer? Yeah, that's me. Well, it wasn't exactly staggering when I left, sir, but... Go on. Well, he wasn't far off it. When there were a load of shorts lined up in the bar and all. So, you think it's possible? Well, anything's possible, isn't it, sir? And he didn't say anything about being off today, going anywhere? Not to me, no. OK, Matthew. If you hear anything, let me know. Sir? Dave Quinnan's local next Homerton, isn't it? That's right, sir. A duty officer, please. I can see the headlines now. Dumb cops nick cripple for cat burgling. Here they are, they got me shitting up drain pipes when I can barely climb the stairs. Mr. Dyer, a man fitting your description was seen in the car. Well, that's odd. Because since the accident, I can't actually drive. How did the accident happen, Mr. Dyer? Well, I was dismantling scaffolding when a platform collapsed. Didn't fall far, but I fell badly. Basically, I broke me back. Where was this? I was restoring one of them big Victorian houses in Elberton Street. Who were you working for? Castor's Construction. Can tell you where they are now. We'll have a word with your GP then. What's his name? Don't tell him, Dad. Let them find out for themselves. It's okay, girl. I've got nothing to hide. It's Dr. Worth, Malham Street L Centre. You don't believe me, do you? You think I'm trying it on? Sergeant Greg? Yeah. Dr. Worth, he wanted to see me. Yeah, this is Detective Constable Croft. Let's talk in my room, shall we? Thank you. You want to ask me about one of my patients, a Mr. John Dyer? That's correct, Doctor. You do realise I'm bound by certain rules regarding confidentiality? Yeah, Mr. Dyer himself suggested we see you. It's in his interest that you talk to us, Doctor. We're trying to eliminate him from an inquiry. He's a suspect? Uh, possibly. But he claims he had a fall at work. He did? Oh, well, we're glad to have that settled, at least. If Mr. Dyer is as disabled as he appears to be, then obviously we're barking up the wrong tree. How badly injured was Mr. Dyer? He fractured several vertebrae. That's very painful and it can be incapacitating. Can be, Doctor. Look, why don't you just tell me what crime this man is suspected of, and I'll give you my opinion as to whether you should pursue the matter or cross him off your list. That's my best offer. Take it or leave it. All right. We believe he may have been involved in a burglary. Could you be more specific? That he climbed up a drain pipe, lowered himself from a roof, and got into a flat through a small window. That sounds like quite a feat. Forget this man. Look elsewhere for your culprit. He couldn't have done it. Given the nature of his injuries, no. In my opinion, Mr. Dyer couldn't have done it.
Many thanks. Go. I'll ring back, yeah, I promise. Cheers. Thank you, bye. Gary Parker, Serge. Last I heard, he'd move back to Glasgow. Better stick him on the possible list just in case. No, Jack died yet, then. He's fallen out the frame. Oh, what's that then? Injured his back. Oh, yeah. No, really, we spoke to his doctor. Apparently Jack's not as nimble or as quick as he used to be. You talking about Jack Dyer? Yeah. Do you know him? Personally, no. Never set eyes on the bloke. But I was checking his form out in Mother's Ogre. Oh, why were you interested in him? No, not me. I was doing a favour for an old mate. Frank Sampson. I worked with him at Upminster. He never got the promotion he thought he deserved, so he moved into the private sector surveillance. Sounds promising. Hmm. Dyer had some sort of accident at work. So he says. Yeah, well, he was taking out a personal injury claim, and the insurance company thought it was a bit bogus or iffy at least. So they hired Frank to keep an eye on Dyer to see if they could catch him out playing football. Or should he look drain pipes? Yeah, something like that, yeah. <laughs> Looks like you're back in business. Yeah, Greg and Dixie Croft. I'll make you Dyer. Mr. Sampson. Frank, please. Hi. Okay. Tosh Lines tells me we share a professional interest in Jack <coughs> Dyer. He's a suspect in a current investigation. Don't be coy, Sergeant. What's he supposed to have done? He burgled a flat, broke in through a fourth floor window. Do you think he's physically capable of doing that? What, cat burglary, you mean? More or less. Well, it's not beyond the bounds of possibility, I suppose. You like to see some home movies? Yeah, where you going? Not much. You've been very careful. So where's he going there? On that occasion, probably down the pub. Do you ever follow him? Sometimes. Not 24 hours a day, obviously. It's all a matter of establishing routine. You know that. So what's your view of Dyer's injury? Do you think he's faking? Oh, yeah, I'd say he's swinging the lead. You got any proof? Only way I've seen him move once or twice. Look at this, for instance. No collar, see? They're good pictures. I've got an OP in a block of flats opposite the house. So was the accident a setup? Oh, no, no. It happened, there's no doubt about that, but now he's milking it. But if he really fell? Yeah, well, spinal injuries are dodgy, you know. One bloke's crippled for life, another makes a full recovery and goes back to his career as a trapeze artist. Well, that convinces me, Sarge. It might convince you, love, but it wouldn't convince the court. There's not enough of it. I thought these cases hardly ever came to court. They don't. There's generally a settlement, but we need enough hard evidence to beat Dyer's solicitor over the head with. And in five weeks, that's all I managed to get. So what are you going to do about it? Nothing. Nothing? I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I'm going to advise the insurance company to pay out. So he gets away with it? Afraid so. But I get paid by the hour, not by results. Same as you lot. Which is just as well under the circumstances, isn't it? Hang on just a tick. Let's just give it one more bash, shall we? Together. Sir? Oh, Andrew, by the way. Sir? Your missing officer he hasn't turned up yet, has he? Not yet, sir. <laughs> Must have been quite a party. Well, I called his local Nick and got them to visit his flat. Oh, yes? He's not at home, sir. At least they couldn't get an answer. You don't think it's anything serious, do you? I'm afraid I'm rather inclined to agree with your earlier assessment, sir. Mm, yeah. Well, let me know, will you, Andrew, please? Sir? Oh, drawbacks of the private sector. I mean... I can't just knock on doors, flash a warrant card and commandeer someone's front room, can I? I have to make do. Use a spot of ingenuity. Yeah. Good view, eh? How much time do you spend up here? As much as is necessary. I know Dyer's habits now. I can predict his movements. His wife will be home soon. She'll cook tea, then they'll be off down the pub. Sometimes just him and his missus. Sometimes all three of them. Oxtail soup, anyone? No thanks, Frank. I'm fine. 
All right? Hello. Managed to stagger in there, Dave. Oh, yeah, leave it out. Dave, Dave, are you uh, feeling all right? Yeah, I'm fine. Good, good. I was uh, worried about you, that's all. No, I'm, I'm fine. Ah, oh, Quinnon, at last. Sir? Good party, was it? Sorry, sir? For your birthday last night. Oh, it well, wasn't a party, sir. It's just a quiet drink with the lads after work. Dave, my office now. I hope I wasn't interrupting anything, sir. No, no, no. You carry on. A quiet drink with a few of the lads. Sir? From what I've heard, you're doing rather a lot of quiet drinking. Well, not really, sir. In fact, I went home early because I had... So much so that you couldn't get yourself into work. Sir, I think there might Couldn't well even get been... to a phone, apparently. You certainly didn't have the courtesy to call in and tell anyone where you were. Sir, I think... Come in! I'd just tell you I'm back to that everything went fine. Did you get a result, Dave? Yeah, fine, all clear. Good. Well, what results? Bob, what are you talking about? Well, Dave's been at St Thomas's all afternoon. Blood test, hepatitis B. We're a close family, the Dyers. So it seems. How long do you plan to stay here? As long as it takes. Forever? That's how long it will take. The Dyer's too canny. What do you think he's going to do? Appear in his mask and cape and take off over the rooftops? Sarge, something's happening. They're going down the pub, that's what's happening. Do we follow? You coming? You two go on ahead. I'll see you later. I came into contact with a virus earlier in the year, sir. A uh, suspect spat in my face whilst I was making an arrest. Yes, I remember. Well, I had a course of injections just in case. They give you another blood test at the end, just to see if it's worked. And that's where you were this afternoon? Yes, sir. St Thomas's, sir. Well, Quinnan, why didn't you tell somebody? He what? did, sir. He told me. No one else? Well, no, sir. I mean, you know, blood tests, injections, it's not the sort of thing you want to shout about. I mean, the canteen jokes are just not funny. Yes, right. Point taken. You knew nothing about this? I knew Dave was having the vaccinations, yes, sir. Unfortunately, I didn't know that's where he was today. Well, why didn't somebody pass on the information? It's my fault, sir. I had to rush off to this funeral. Sergeant Lamont backed out at the last minute. I had to step in. This breakdown of communications, I can only suggest that Sergeant Cryer and I review our systems to make sure it doesn't happen again. No, 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 no. Look, we've wasted enough time on this already. No one's to blame. Uh, sir, I wasn't seeking to it's apportion... It's a classic cock-up. Hard to anticipate, even harder to avoid. Now, I'm sure we've all got more important things to be getting on with, haven't we? Sir. Sir. Right. Sarge, you don't think we're flogging a dead horse here, do you? Got a date tonight, Susie? <laughs> no. It's just that if Samson hasn't come up with anything useful in five weeks... Why should we do any better? Yeah. I mean, I know Samson isn't exactly Mr Efficiency, but he does seem to know Dyer's routine. That's the point, Susie. Samson knows Dyer's routine, but what if Dyer knows Samson's? Oh, we're in it now. Let's run with it, see where it takes us. Look who it is. Hmm. You still at it then? Didn't think you were coming. Oh, I had some other business to see too. This is on my way home, so I thought I'd just drop by and see how you're doing. You're doing fine, thank you. Yeah, take him. Oh. Dyer's no, been in there, what? A couple of hours? Yeah, just over. They'll be coming out any minute now, all three of them. Never stays more than a couple of hours. Then it goes straight home as usual. Why don't you follow his example and do the same, eh? Thanks for the advice, Mr Samson, but I think we'll stick it out a little longer. Oh, yeah, I'm sure you will. You're willing to overtime now, aren't you? <laughs> How much is that these days? Time and a third, is it? Look, either get in or move away. You're making us very conspicuous. Don't worry, mate. I'm going. I've got better things to do. Can't imagine what. I wonder if that insurance company know what they're getting for their money. I doubt it. 
Sarge. Look at him, he's moving more easily. It's a bit risky, isn't it, with Samson about? Told you, Susie, he knows Samson's habits. He thinks he's safe. They're switching cars. Where's Mrs. Dyer? Long way from home. So that's the place they're lining up. Very nice. I don't think so, Susie. Sad? I think they've already lined it up. The place looks empty. That the owners were, you know, out or away. What, you think they'd do two jobs in as many nights? It's a bit risky, isn't it? Maybe that's what Dyer thrives on. No sticks. I knew he was still at it. He just hasn't guessed that she was driving for him. She's not. What are you talking about? He's driving for her. He's teaching her his trade, father to daughter. Good grief. Sarge, um, shouldn't we try and stop her getting in? No, we'll get her when she gets out. What about backup? No need for that. We'll have to grab Dyer, stop him getting away. Come on. Come on, get out of the car, open up. Sarge! Sierra Oscar... Susan! Ambulance required, 51 La Plata Avenue. Don't move her, don't move her. Ambulance is on its way, Sarge. How is she? God! You silly little bitch. I knew we should have waited. We should have hung on like I said. So this was her idea, was it? Doing another job so soon? No, it was my idea. It was all my idea. Susan didn't want any part of it. And you made her? Yeah, that's right. Susan's a good girl, that's as she's told. That's not what it looked like to me, Jack. From where I was standing, Susan seemed pretty keen. <laughs> Hang on, girl. You're gonna be fine. Where's that bloody ambulance? It should be here any minute. I'm arresting you both for burglary. You do not have to say anything. I'm the one, Sergeant. Arrest me. You may harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something which you later rely on in court. Anything you do say may be given in evidence. 